The boy in the box is a name given to an unidentified murder victim who was found lying in a cardboard box in the Fox Chase section of Philadelphia on February 25th, 1957. His body was naked and battered and he was approximately four to six years old at the time of his death. On the day in question, the person who eventually reported the boy's body was not actually the first to find it. The first person to find the boy in the box was a young man who had placed muskrat traps, who had placed muskrat traps and was checking on them. The young man worried that his traps would be confiscated by the police and so he kept quiet on the grizzly find. A couple of days later, a college student driving past saw a rabbit running through the thickets. He knew the traps had been set in the area and so he pulled over, followed and found the body. He also didn't want to get involved and so he waited until the following day to finally report what he'd found. The body was wrapped in a plaid blanket and placed inside a box that had once and placed inside a box that had once held a baby's bassinet purchased from JC Penney's. The boy was clean and dry and recently groomed. However, he looked to be undernourished. Clumps of hair found on the body suggested he had been groomed after death. The boy had many bruises on his body, particularly on his head and face, and all appeared to have been inflicted at the same time. He had also had seven scars on his body, some of which could have been surgical in nature. Two were on the chest and groin, and x-rays showed no evidence of fractures at any time in his life. When examined, one eye fluoresced under UV light, which indicated that eye drops may have been used. Perhaps the child had a chronic eye condition. He had not eaten in the two to three hours before he died, and his hands and feet were wrinkled as if they had been submerged in water for some time. Establishing a time of death was made difficult due to the cool weather. The boy could have been lying in his box for anywhere from a couple of days to two or three weeks. About 15 feet from the box, a distinctive blue cap was found. The case attracted a huge following in the media and the boy's photo was also put into every gas bill posted in Philadelphia. Thousands of posters, thousands of posters printed with his photo and description were displayed all over Philadelphia and also distributed across the country. The police even dressed the boy's body and posed him in a chair, thinking that a more natural setting of the body may jog someone's memory. thinking that a more natural setting of the body may jog someone's memory. The box was examined, but no fingerprints were found. The police also checked records against the boy's own fingerprints, but no match was found there. The blue hat found at the scene was recognised as being made by a local, a Mrs Hannah Robbins. She recalled that a man aged between 26 and 30 had bought it, but had requested that she add a leather strap and a buckle to it. He was in working clothes, had no discernible accent, and he was alone. The man had not been seen since, and no one remembered seeing a boy wearing the cap. Bill Kelly, a fingerprint expert, took the footprints of the boy in the box on the day he was found, but no match was found at local hospitals. Over the years, he has on his own time compared the footprints of every birth in each nearby hospital, but he has never found a match. In 1965, Kelly had an idea that perhaps the boy had been a recent immigrant, which would explain why he had no footprints or hospital records on file. He discovered a boy who looked exactly like the boy in the box, who was from a Hungarian family. However, upon investigation, the boy was found safe and well. At the time of the discovery, the police checked every orphanage, foster home and hospital in the area where the body was found, but no one reported a child missing. Early leads included a New York airman who thought it was his kidnapped son, 
a boy from West Philly thinking it was his younger brother, and a woman from Lancaster who thought it was her son who was being looked after by his, in her mind, unfit father. These and all other leads were eventually proven false. Like most unsolved cases, there are a huge number of theories surrounding the boy in the box. There is, however, two most investigated. Remington Bristow was an employee of the medical examiner's office who was obsessed with the case. He investigated on his own right up until his own death in 1993. In 1960, he contacted a psychic from New Jersey. Approximately one and a half miles from the site where the body was recovered was a foster home. The psychic described to Bristow a home that matched the foster home, and in addition, when she was brought to visit the site, she led him directly to the home. Bristow went to an estate sale being held at the foster home and found a baby bassinet that was similar to the one that had been sold at J.C. Penney at the time. He also found blankets that were similar to the one the boy was found wrapped in. Bristow believed that the boy in the box with the Bristow believed that the boy in the box was the child of a stepdaughter of the man who had ran the foster home. He theorises that after the accidental death of the boy, they got rid of the body so she would not be exposed as a single mother. However, police were never able to find any evidence to link the family to the boy and a DNA test has since also ruled out the daughter as the child's mother. The second major theory only came to light in February 2002 and involves a woman who is only identified as M. M claims that her mother purchased the boy from his birth parents in the summer of 1954. She reports that her mother was abusive and that the boy was named Jonathan. According to M, the boy was then a victim of extreme physical and sexual abuse for two and a half years and that her mother killed him in a rage by slamming him into the floor after he vomited in the bath. She reported that her mother then cut his long hair in an attempt to disguise him and dumped the body. Police had noted that the boy had appeared to have an unprofessional haircut and bruises around his hairline. M claims that while they were dumping the boy, a man driving past pulled over and offered, his, and offered his assistance just as they were preparing to remove the boy's body from the trunk. They declined the offer and after a while the man drove off. This statement matches original witness testimony from 1957, which alleged that the body was not transported in the box, but it was simply found at the scene and used. Police considered that the story was plausible, but were troubled by reports that M had a history of mental illness. They interviewed neighbours who reported that there had never been a young boy living with them, and her claims were ridiculous. Despite never identifying the boy, there were some suspects that were examined by police. A Mrs. Margaret Martinez from Thornton, Colorado was arrested in 1960 after she admitting to throwing the body of her three-year-old daughter into a trash can. She matched the description of a woman who had been seen standing next to a parked car near where the body was found, but questioning never revealed any connection or link to the boy in the box. Private Edward J. Posovac from Philadelphia was detained by police after the disappearance of a woman he was dating. Police found clippings about the boy in the box case in his car. However, the private agreed to take a lie detector test and passed. He was questioned extensively, but detectives were convinced in the end he was not anywhere near when the crime took place. Six people originally identified the boy as Terry Lee Spies, an eight-year-old who lived with his roofer and labourer father. Police issued a 12-state alarm to find his father, even though the boy's mother, who had not seen him for a year, and Terry's maternal grandparents said that, that the boy in the box was not Terry. Sometime later, Terry was found alive and living with his father in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Many other leads over the years have also proved fruitless. The case is one of the more well-known unsolved mysteries and has been featured on America's Most Wanted. It has also been fictionalised on shows such as Cold Case CSI, Crime Scene Investigation and Law and Order SVU. In 1998, the boy was excused 
In 1998, the boy was exhumed and DNA evidence was collected. He was then reburied as America's unknown child in a donated coffin in Ivy Hill Cemetery. Efforts are currently underway to try to match DNA extracted from one of his teeth to any living relative. Unfortunately, however, the sample sequence is likely too small to ever provide a conclusive match to anyone. The chances are that anyone who was involved in the case, or indeed committed the murder, is now also dead. Many believe that had the crime occurred in modern times, it would have been solved.